So I want to address something that came across my Facebook feed, and trust me, I really try to avoid doing this for the most part, but there was an incident that went kind of viral in our area not too long ago that uh, I want to address because it gets to the heart of a lot of misinformation and simplistic thinking when it comes to self-defense, in particular the use of a firearm. So there was an unfortunate incident where a gentleman was approached at a gas station convenient area where, and by someone asking for some money. The gentleman declined. The guy started to, a fight ensued uh, as a result, and the guy had his wallet taken by force by the assailant who then ran off, got in his car, drove away. And they put it out as a kind of a public service announcement on the internet, on Facebook or whatever, be careful this area and stuff like that. And I want to address the situation, not because of the actual crime, although my heart goes out to the victim, that really sucks, but because of the the aftermath, the comments that were in this particular post. And there were, when I looked, there was over a thousand, and I certainly didn't read all thousand of them, but just in one screen, this is the type of thing that I read. I feel sorry, but, a sh but it's a shame he wasn't carrying, so he could have smoked the punk. What an SOB, if he were trying to rob me, I'm shooting his blank and asking questions later. All you can do when someone speaks like this is to take them out first. Sure wish he had him had a gun on him so he could have killed the idiot before he did it to someone else. And if he had had a gun, that wouldn't have happened. Truthfully, even if he had a gun, that probably should have happened. And let me explain. For starters, if you pull a gun on someone the minute they ask you for some money, you're a bigger thug than they are. That is definitely not justifiable use of a firearm. You're committing a felony and you're going to go to jail or lose your right to carry a firearm for the rest of your life for being too quick on the trigger. No pun intended there. Right? The and even if the even after the fight had ensued, and there's certainly no guarantee in that situation that, that a fight a scuffle still wouldn't have ensued, okay? Uh, according to the accounts, there was no uh, presence of a weapon, so no justification, or it was not a forcible felony at this point. There, I wasn't there, I don't know, but there was no uh, mention of the assailant expressing intent or um, suggesting that grievous bodily harm was going to happen, even in the fight. Uh, based on the pictures of the aftermath, it wasn't that big of a scuffle. It would have been very hard, even in the state of Indiana, to justify grievous body, bodily harm, or in other words, again, the use of uh, lethal force to defend yourself. So you're probably going to jail if you brought a weapon to bear in that moment. And let's talk about training for a second. In the middle of the scuffle, you're trying to pull a weapon out, and you have to make sure, now it becomes an issue of gun retention and close quarter uh, fighting with your firearm, which, you know, a lot of people who... Uh, are making these comments, and let me say that I should not be too surprised that people are talking tough behind their keyboards, probably tougher than they are in real life, or I, nor should I really be uh, particularly surprised that there's stupidity on the internet. But at the same time, right, we're talking about very different skill sets than what some of these guys have probably uh, are accustomed to, just basically shooting beer cans and bottles in their backyard or blowing up Tannerite. Right? I certainly uh, am a fan of a handgun as part of your personal protection strategy, but I would encourage you to get the training, and I'm no expert, but I certainly have done a lot more training in self-defense skills that are specific to uh, these types of situations when it comes to firearms, right? But, um, so it deals with weapon retention. He raised the, he escalated the skates when he draws the weapon. Now it becomes a lethal situation. It's just as likely he, by the fact he lost the fight, is just as likely he probably would have gotten shot with his own weapon at that point. And you have to ask yourself whether it's worth it. Right? I'm willing to bet that the gentleman in question and all the all the keyboard warriors saying it was he should have not given up his wallet probably had less than fifty bucks in that wallet. I promise you that the the legal fees of defending yourself in court for for pulling that weapon prematurely. Would have been a whole lot more than that, right? Quick snippet, cliche type of you know self defense advice, such as better be tri tried by twelve than carried by six, and all those things. They're simplistic. They 
are not a reflection of reality and they will get you into trouble. Right? You have to understand the laws and how, especially when we're talking about something like uh, lethal force um, through the, by using a firearm, okay, you have to understand the complexities of the situation. A, a little while ago, I posted a firearm talk by one of my friends, Tony Oliveira, uh, as it relates to uh, self-defense and the law. I would highly encourage you guys to scroll down in our feed and find that post and go to that. He's not the only one who does that, but get some training, get some understanding, and don't sound like an idiot.